Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Dog Recipes. Today we are making Wanzhou Kao Yu. Wanzhou is a district in Chongqing, Sichuan Province, where this dish is originally from. Kao Yu means grilled fish. The first time I had it, I was in college. My roommate was describing the dish while dragging me to the mall. You have to try this special grilled fish. They put it in hot pot. It's so delicious. And I was like, what? How does hot pot and grilled fish sound good together? You would never think about these two things being put together. And it turns out I love it since then. I'm so excited to share the recipe with you. I'm using a yellowtail snapper today. You can use any type of fish as long as it's white and lean. This dish is a combination of barbecue and hot pot. Hot pot soup base is already oily, so an oil-rich type of fish would not do well in this recipe. I got this fish from Whole Foods. It's already halfway prepared. They scaled it, cut down the belly, removed the gut scales and fins, rinsed everything out. I don't really need to do anything, but I do want to show you how to split the fish in half. Slice the fish along the backbone all the way down to the tail. As you are doing this, you want to hear the sound of the knife cutting the bones. Once the body part of the fish is split, you can cut the head in half. It requires a heavy-duty cleaver, and it does need a lot of force. Slice the fillet 3 to 5 times on each side to help with the marinade. Splitting the fish is optional. I'm just trying to duplicate the restaurant presentation. This looks like two fish laying in one tray. And it's the trick that restaurants always use to make you think they serve a lot of food. If you don't want to do this, I understand. You can just simply skip this part and grill the fish whole. It will take a little longer to cook because the fish meat is thicker. But other than that, nothing will change. Now, let's marinate the fish. 4 to 5 scallions. Separate the white part and the green part. Save the white part for stir frying. Cut the green part into 1.5 inch long. A small piece of ginger. Crush and roughly dice it. Two cloves of garlic. Crush and roughly dice it. Squeeze and crush the green part of the scallion, add it to the tray. Follow up with the ginger and the garlic. This fish is about one and a half pound. So I will add one teaspoon of salt, sprinkle it here and there, drizzle in two to three tablespoons of Chinese cooking wine. Rub it all over the fish. Cover that and let it sit for 15 minutes. Besides the fish, we still got a lot of ingredients involved in this recipe. So let me prepare and go through them one by one before we start cooking. One cup of red dried chilies. Cut some of them open by using a pair of scissors. Give it a few rubs to loosen up the seeds. Then get a strainer and you can easily remove the seeds. I know, there are a lot of chilies, but don't worry, you can adjust it based on your taste. This is hua jiao, also known as Sichuan peppercorns. It's not spicy at all, but it gives you a tingling and numbing effect. I'm using one and a half tablespoon today. If you have never cooked with this ingredient before, please use a small amount first, such as one teaspoon and see how you like it. Sichuan peppercorns can be overpowerful and ruin the dish. Soak these two ingredients in water for 15 minutes. If you don't soak them, they will burn easily while stirring in the oil. A little bit of moisture will give them enough time to transfer the flavors to the oil without burning. Set them aside. 4 to 5 fresh green chilies. Roughly dice them. 
A little bit of green color makes the dish prettier in the presentation. This is the white part of the scallion that we reserved. Roughly dice it. Grab one to two inches of ginger and slice it thinly. Add everything into a bowl along with 15 cloves of peeled garlic. You don't need to do anything to them, just leave them whole. I put these four ingredients together because they will go into the wok at the same time. Get one medium sized red onion, discard the top and the root. Remove the dried outer layers. Cut into chunks. Place it in a heat proof tray and break it up. I'm using a ceramic baking pan, but you can use a cast iron skillet if you want. Follow up with some bean sprout. This is my must have item whenever I make grilled fish hot pot. You will be surprised at how savory and tasty it turns out in that spicy and numbing soup base. So, these two ingredients are like the bed. All the other things are going to go on top of it. Set the baking pan aside and continue to cut vegetables. This is lotus root. Remove the skin. This lotus root has some bruises. That happens. It is still edible. All you need to do is to remove the bad part by using a carving knife. Slice it into a quarter of an inch thick pieces. Soak them in water so they don't oxidize and turn to a brown color. This is Celtis. We call it Wu Sun, also known as stem letters. You have to peel the skin because it's quite tough. The stem part is very meaty. I love the taste. So fresh, crunchy, and slightly sweet. Slice it into a quarter of an inch thick pieces. Set it aside. This is Chinese celery. Discard the root. Remove all the green leaves. We only need the stems in this recipe. Cut it into one and a half inch long. Let me show you the stem. It's so thin and curved into round, hollow stalk. It smells so strong, like 10 times of the Western celery. If you don't have access to buy it, regular celery will work as well. Set it aside. This is tofu shoot. Roll it up and slice it into a quarter of an inch thick strips. Another item that I like to put is these white mung bean noodles. You have to soak them one hour in advance until they are nice and soft. We add the noodles to the hot pot at the very last moment when you finish eating all the food and there's only soup left. That is the best time to cook these noodles. But this is already too much food for me, so I didn't prepare the noodles today. If you have a big family, definitely try out these noodles. The spirit of making hot pot is that you can use whatever ingredients you have in your fridge. Everything here is what I like to use. If you don't have access to buy them, don't worry about it. You can just use cabbage, carrot, potato, work just as well. The last ingredient that I want to talk about is the hot pot base. Today I'm making the spicy and numbing flavor, which is classic for Wanzhou Kao Yu. This is homemade and I do have a separate video that I showed you how to make it from scratch. The link is in the description. You can check it out later. If you don't have time to make it yourself, you can buy the package from the store like this one, the spicy and numbing flavor package. As this dish gets more and more popular, they also make it with many flavors now, such as the pickled chili flavor, pickled mustard green flavor. In China, I also had it in garlic flavor, curry flavor, which I don't have a package example to show you right now, but they are very delicious. Okay, we have everything ready. Let's preheat the oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. If your oven cannot go to 500 degrees, you can just do 
400, 450, don't worry about it. The fish has been sitting for 15 minutes now. Use a paper towel to absorb the moisture and remove all the aromatics. Flip the fish onto a baking rack. Using a baking rack will allow air circulation. If you don't have one, you can lay the fish on a tin foil, but you have to flip it a couple of times to ensure an even baking. Apply a layer of chili oil. This helps to char the fish nicely and prevent it from sticking to the baking ware. The chili oil is homemade. The recipe link is in the description. You can check it out later. If you don't have time to make the chili oil, don't worry, you can use your regular cooking oil. The reason I use chili oil is that it has a complex flavor which fits well in this recipe. Put the fish in the oven. First, we will let it bake at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. A high temperature will quickly dry up the surface and make it crispy, creating that grilled smoky characteristic. 10 minutes later, take it out. This is how it looks. Brush the second layer of chili oil on the fish. This time, we only do the skin side. Also, wrap the tail with tin foil because it gets burned easily. Before brushing the oil, I turned the oven heat down to 400 degrees Fahrenheit because I want to slowly evaporate a bit of moisture inside the fish meat. That way, the fish will absorb lots of flavors when you put it in the hot pot. Stick the fish back into the oven. Let it bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 25 minutes. Depends on your preference. While waiting, we will start cooking in the wok. Add some oil. You don't need to wait for it to get hot. Directly add in the soaked but well-drained red dried chilies and the Sichuan peppercorns. Stir these two ingredients on low for a couple of minutes until most of the moisture has evaporated. Then, toss in the diced green chilies, the white part of the scallion, garlic cloves, and ginger slices. Keep stirring until fragrant. Add in the hot pot soup base. I used about 2 3rd cups, but you can use less or more depending on your taste. Give a quick stir and pour in 4 to 5 cups of water, or stock is even better if you have it. Bring this to a boil, then turn the heat to low. Give it a taste. Season it with some salt. I used one and a half tablespoon here. It should taste a lot saltier because we got lots of vegetables and tofu sheets that we will add later. I also used two teaspoons of sugar. This recipe is spicy and flavorful. A little bit of sugar is good to balance the taste. Once the flavor is good, get a big spoon. Take out some chilies, garlic, reserve it on the side. We will use it as a garnish. Then add the lotus root, stem lettuce, Chinese celery, and tofu sheets. The temperature would drop a lot, so wait for it to come back to a boil. Then pour everything into the rectangle baking pan. By now, the fish should be ready. Take it out and carefully place the fish in the baking pan. Garnish it with the reserved ingredients and you are done. This dish is supposed to be served with a portable stove on the table, which is perfect for now because the weather is getting cold. If you don't have a portable stove, that is okay. You can continue to heat everything on your regular stove for about five minutes until the fish is infused with that spicy and numbing soup base. Then you can take it out of the kitchen and serve it on the table. This dish really brings me back to China.
especially with this pandemic. It's so hard to travel anywhere. This is definitely helping with my homesickness. I hope you give this a try soon. If you did, leave me a comment. Let me know how it goes. As always, don't forget to check the description where you can find all the links, including the printable recipes, the related videos, the purchase link for special ingredients if you don't know where to buy them, or the tools that I used in this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.